Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be talking about lead code problem number 46. It's called permutations. Okay, so the description is given an array nums of distinct integers, return all possible permutations. You can return the answer in any order. Okay, so they've given us an example one, two, three, and we want to return all the possible permutations of one, two, three. So we return one, two, three. 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1. Another example is 0, 1, and in that case we return 0, 1, and 1, 0, and we, if it's just a single element, we just return that. Okay, so if you guys see a term like all possible permutations or all possible combinations, or even all possible permutations with some constraint, uh, you want to think about backtracking algorithm or, or it's also called DFS recursion. What that is, is essentially you are making a choice and then you are recursing on that choice. But the next time you make a choice, you want to subtract the choice that you made so you don't have that choice anymore and then you have to make an another choice and then another choice until there is no more choices left and once you have the final result then you can terminate your recursion for that given branch and then you make another choice trust me guys it's gonna all make sense let's just switch over to the whiteboard to visualize that more Okay guys, so in general, in generally all backtracking algorithms, uh, we are working on one set of problem at a time, as in like we are trying to find one permutations at a time, and then we're gonna make another choice and we're gonna find another permutations. And that one working set, which I've, demo which I've written up here, WS is our working set. So and I've also added some sort of notes about how uh, notes about how backtracking algorithm in general works. So you're gonna see uh, you're gonna see how we make choices and how we're gonna fill up the working set in here. So in this case, we have one, two, three as our choices, and we have nothing picked out so far. So we need to make a choice because we have a lot of choices to make. So let's make a choice. So we're going to pick one from our choice list. So once we make a choice, we want to put it to our working set. So our choices will now be two and three since we already picked one. And then we're going to pick one in our working set. And we're going to call the same recursion function again. Now we still have two choices, which is two and three. So now let's make a choice for each one of them. So if we pick two, then we can remove two from our choice list, which leaves us with three. And then we can put one and two here. And we have to make another choice, which is to pick. So I'm just gonna note it here as a two, it's what we picked. And here we pick three. So that leaves us with two as our choices and one and three would be our working set. So now we still have one more choice to go, which is one element, which is three. So let's pick three, which will leave us with the empty work, empty choices. One, two, three. So now we're gonna call recursion on, on this. That should terminate because we have no more choices left and we have found our solution right here. So one, two, three is our solution. So that's our base case. As soon as we see there is no more choices left, we're going to put it, put the, whatever the working set is onto our stack of answers. So we go back and then we pick right here. Then we just, uh, we come to this branch and in this branch, we have one choice to go, which is two. So we're just going to pick that, that leaves us with the no more choices. And we're going to put one, three, two. And that right there is also going to hit the base case and we're going to store one, three, two as our 
the as our answer or one of the possible permutations so what i was saying about making a choice even though there is a constraint so for example if the question has constraint like find all permutations that does not start with the two so in that case we cannot start with two because that would be the choice that makes it invalid so that's what i that's what i that's what i meant when i say all permutations with some constraint so we can still do those kind of problems with the same backtracking algorithm but in our case we don't have as a, a as our choice so that leaves us with one and three and then two becomes our working copy and then we have two more choice to go one and three so we just keep on going with the all the rest of the recursions so hopefully that makes sense hopefully just by looking at this you should be able to now uh, work on the problem yourself please try it out and but I'll jump on to the I would encourage you guys to try it out on your own but if you just want to watch the solution uh, let's get right to it okay guys so like we discussed before in our recursion function we're gonna need a choices so let's create the function uh, let's just return nothing permutations permutation I'm just gonna call it and we're gonna have a choices I'm just gonna make it a list and we have a working set and we have a result and we're just passing in the result here so if we ever hit that base case where there is no more choices left we can just store our working set into the permutations so let's write the base case here if choices dot count equals zero that means there is no more choices so in that case we just want to add new list of integers working set notice that I'm not setting the working set as a as a list as is I'm copying it right here because we're going to be manipulating working set for each different branches that we go to so that's why we're just copying and storing it into the answer set so now that it's not a base case we want to make choices so and we want to make all of the choices one after another if choices dot i plus plus so let's make the first choice so as soon as we make a choice for the next iteration we want to remove that choice and we want to add it to the working set right so we're gonna say choices that remove at I but before we remove that let's store the value because we want to add it to our working set so choices at I working set that add value we remove it from the choices and we call permutation sorry choices working set and the permutations okay so once we call the permutation function and uh, at this point we know that we have removed one choice and we have added that added that to the working set now we want to put it back because it, we want, we have to make the next choice so let's add the choice that we picked back to the index that it was at insert and we want to remove from the working set So I think this should be good enough and now we need to call that function obviously so let's call
called permutations equal new list of list of integers and we're going to call that function now and the choices we have is the nums it's going to call it to list and working set would be empty to begin with and we're going to pass in the permutations and we want to return permutation okay so let me just double check I didn't make any typos or anything like that okay so one more time guys we're going to start out with the choices of the interray that we've given and the working set is empty if the choices are nothing then we're going to add it to the work add the working set to our permutations list if not we're going to make one choice at a time we're going to permute over that choice and we're going to add that choice back so we can make another choice with the previous choices intact so hopefully that makes sense let's run it Yeah, we need to cast it back to the result type here. And let's call this at least as well. Sorry guys. This also need to be the eye list. Here you go guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any other questions that you want me to discuss, please put it in the comment section. Otherwise, thank you very much. Have a nice day, bye.